Welcome back to John's Films, a place we do editing, effects, benchmarks, and make hardware recommendations for DaVinci Resolve. Today we're going to be looking at a $2,000 price point for a DaVinci Resolve Studio workstation. Why does it matter that it's Studio? Well, Studio enables hardware encoding for H.264 and H.265 and provides greater support for GPU accelerated effects. That makes a difference when you're editing footage that's in those codecs. And so I want to make sure that I can leverage that with the hardware that I pick. If this guide helps you, feel free to buy me a coffee below just to say thanks. Now let's take a look. I've already chosen a few of the parts. The 3900X, because of the 12 cores, you can't touch that in the Intel camp for the price. And further, it's got a, a high enough clock speed, executes enough instructions per cycle that I am perfectly happy with this chip. Now, I do need to cool it. It comes with a cooler, if I recall. Let's check it out. Packaging box includes CPU cooler, yep. And that CPU cooler is perfectly fine. In fact, you know what? We're going to use it because I want to pay for performance and uh, just a little bit better cooling. I'm not overclocking it because it's a production workstation. And to that end, I don't want water cooling. I don't want to mess with it. I'd rather have my production workstation work. Air cooling, I could go with that Noctua I just had up or the Dark Rock, but I would like to save the money for other more exciting things. Now let's pull the motherboard out of the list. I've run this, uh, I've already recorded this three times, by the way. Each time I've used a different motherboard and I've been having a lot of problems getting something that works with memory compatibility that also has a USB Type-C front panel connector. So I'm gonna show you what I look for in a motherboard and you can see here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, six or seven USB ports on the back for me as a creator. That is something I'm looking for. This one has a Type-C, I like that as well. However, what I much prefer is a Type-C connection on the front. Let's see if we can see that. It would typically be in this region. However, I do not see one. Okay, so on the MSI camp, we're gonna have to go up in our motherboards. For the record, I've already looked at ASUS. The memory compatibility in the ASUS was really limited, especially from a speed perspective. ASRock, I couldn't find the memory compatibility on a board I liked there, the Velocita. I really liked that board. If you can find that for me, that's fantastic. Um, really looks like a good board. So what I'm going to do is limit this to Gigabyte and MSI and see what we can get if we were to sort by price highest to lowest. Good grief. That Prestige is actually the board I have on the computer I'm filming this on. I only paid 500 I know I say only. It has 10 gigabit networking on board, which is why it's more expensive. All right, this gaming pro may be what we want. Oh, wrong chipset. So let's filter to chipsets. We're gonna go B550 or X570. No reason we should go anywhere else considering those prices are creeping up, especially once we try and add a USB type C to it. This one has one. Now this is a mini ATX board. Micro ATX. Um, not interested in micro ATX, but I like where it's going with that connectivity. Tells me I'm in about the right price range. B550 Aorus Pro AC? Maybe? Nope. All right. And so you know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a connector, a very specific connector. Can we already check this one? that allows you to put a USB Type-C, that's the little round oval looking thing, um, allows you to plug that into a front panel on your case. And that becomes very easy for you to then plug in and uh, go with your camera storing directly to an SSD like I do with my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K. And it is worth the effort of paying for it. Um, if you're shooting on any modern cameras, I expect this is soon to be a pretty regular feature. And as a creator and a creator board, you want that flexibility going forward. Now we're starting to get expensive. This one I'm certain will have it. Let's see here. Come on. There it is right there. That's the port we're looking for. This is a little bit more than I wanted to spend on a motherboard, but we did save money there on that um, cooler. Saved 100 bucks. So we'll put it towards motherboard and a little bit towards memory. To be able to find out what memory we should use with this, unfortunately, we still have to go to the memory qualified vendor list on the MSI website, MSI Meg X570. 
Uh, we don't want the godlike. That thing is expensive. Here we are with the ace. All right. And this one, 12 plus 2 plus 1 digital power. Da, 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 da. That's the what they're talking about. Let's take a look at a motherboard real quick. All right, here on the motherboard, there's several components. Um, generally, what you might be familiar with is where the memory goes. So that's here. You might be familiar with where the processor goes. So that's here. And the PCI slots. This is where you can plug in expansion cards. This first slot is typically reserved for your graphics card. Here you can see that they have one, two, three M.2 slots by the branding. And I can tell you those are PCIe Gen 4 slots. Runs at 32 gigabits per second. Whereas PCIe Gen 3 would be 16. This is the South Bridge. Um, there's a chip under here that controls I.O. and communication from your SATA and other peripherals that hang off of that South Bridge. This is the voltage regulation and, and control for the memory. So this right here manages your memory's power. And these two heat sinks are covering, you can see the chokes right there, capacitors here, of your voltage regulation, which uh, deliver power to your processor. It's got two 8-pin auxiliary powers to go with your 24-pin. This is that USB Type-C port I was talking about. That is important, um, again, to go to the front. This is USB 3. This is USB 2, USB 2. You've got fan headers here, RGB header there, um, audio connector here. Your audio card is going to be under that heat sink. There'll be capacitors under there for that. And that's pretty much a motherboard. All right, I like this one. Looks good. It is $330, $370. Not my favorite part of it. But if we go to the support specific for the motherboard, we can now start to understand compatibility here. I'm going to look at the memory for the Matisse. Where is it? There we go. Matisse chips. That's the 3000 series of processors. And now what I'm looking for is... Let's see what we can do. So that's 8. 32. What happened there, people? All right. Let's play a, a better game. Let's... Well, there's no filter, but I can get more per page. All right, so it's currently sorted on vendor ID. I'm going to go with supported speed, greatest. Now, I'll tell you, it looks really tempting and a lot of fun. It's going to be hard to find something you can put four DIMM slots in, so this last check mark is needed. It also is going to be pretty difficult um, to justify because above about 3,800 megahertz, Ryzen with its memory bridge architecture inside the processor going to the substrate and then back into the silicone, you are effectively losing performance. Yeah, for real, the faster your memory gets, the more you're wasting above about 3,800. If we can find some of this RAM right here, so that's only eight gigabytes. We want 32, is that by module or? Have to see, dual rank. Let's try this HyperX and see what we find. It's a 32 gigabyte kit based on, so that's gonna be two 16s. And that would be good if we could do that twice. We can put it in a four configuration there. Really make out like bandits. I bet it's not in the budget, but we will see. All right, 200 bucks. Um, let's make sure that's the same one, 437 C19 FB3. That is it. All right. Here it is at Amazon. $199 delivered. Get a two. So that'd be $400 for 64 gigabytes. Let's see if we can do that. Now, one of the things I don't always like about PC Part Picker is that they don't have all of the memory. So I can't really. Let's see. Yeah. So that's not here. Well, that's fun. All right, so what you do in that case, you could either start trying to find something they have, or you can just add a custom part. And I'll show you how to do that here. You go to the bottom, add a custom part. It's going to be memory, create the part, add to your part list. And now I have memory. It's going to be at the bottom. Doesn't feel good because it's not in the memory slot. It's not validated, I should note, to work with this motherboard like PC Part Picker does with their other stuff, but it is there and it's in the price. And that's what I care about. Next, I'm going to go with an NVMe drive. I much prefer the Pro Drives, but this is a half-price drive off the Pro Drives right now. 
add a terabyte. Um, so we're going to add that, and that's going to be for our OS and our DaVinci Resolve application. I assume going building a $2,000 workstation, I assume you already have some SSDs from a prior build you plan to carry over. If not, throw in another $100 SSD in there. Make sure it has a DRAM cache. Now we're picking our graphics card. We're going to have about $500 on the graphics card as I've already chosen a case and a power supply. The case, I'll tell you right now, what I was looking for was something spacious, easy to build in, gives me expandability, has a USB Type-C connector to the front here. And uh, that's what we're going to use with that USB connector we found on our motherboard. So let's keep taking a look here. I like that case a lot of built in it. Personally, I can tell you it's easy to build in and it's got plenty of space for whatever cooling you decide you want to use. Um, again, highly recommend air cooling. For the power supply, I picked a Seasonic based on brand and name um, because I know they've built quality power supplies for a long time. You've got an 80 plus gold rating on the efficiency and 850 watts in case we choose to expand to another graphics card in the future. Yes, we would be cutting it a little close in that rate, but even right now it says we're using 185 watts. If we add a graphics card, which is where we're going next, and we've got about $500 for it. And honestly, yeah, that's how I'm going to shop for the graphics card. About 25% to 30% of my total budget I'm going to put into a graphics card and consider that I can upgrade it later. So I'm going to sort by price here. I know that I want something... There is honestly nothing in the Radeon camp that's got me interested right now at a $500 price point. I don't understand why you wouldn't use, and for creators, the studio drivers are starting to enable more and more. So I don't know why you would go with it. Now, this is all price gouging until you get to the 2080 Ti's. But about what we're going to afford, the first 2080 Super comes in around 670 That's too high for us. So we're going to take a look here in the 2070 supers 530 this is dual you can tell it's a basic design which means the cooling is probably going to be a little cheaper which means it may not run quite as fast that's a card i actually own and it runs great i like it i'm going to add it so there we go we got our card and now we're at 207842 and we have a complete build you've seen my rationale between what i've chosen um the core tenets here more cores and the reason we're doing that well, John, your, your hardware accelerated for your render. I am for H.264 and H.265. The 12 cores really pay off when you're talking about rendering to another codec, either an intermediate codec that you're going to edit in, or, hey, in a, a higher delivery capacity that you might be doing in a professional workload. Next is a motherboard solid platform here. All motherboard prices are elevated right now. Um, this one is at least a value for what you get in it. It is a very solid power delivery. It is a solid platform of connectivity. $200 worth of RAM, 32 gigabytes of 3733. That, believe it or not, speed will affect your renders pretty heavily. So I'm thrilled to have been able to add that. I would have liked 64. If you can find 64 that are compatible with your motherboard for about that price, it's likely uh, worth it to drop down to 3200 gigahertz RAM if you do a lot of fusion work. Otherwise, probably not. The 2070 Super, we just talked about that. It's based on price, and it's a great chip. It's got a hardware accelerated encoder in it as well. And then the case is easy to build in, Type-C on the front. Finally, we talked about the power supply. Again, if this has been helpful and you want to say thanks, feel free to buy me a coffee. I love coffee. Links below. Um, otherwise, there are links for everything here below, and you'll be able to find them so that you can do your own research and figure out what you like. If you do do your own research and you like something else, let me know below in the comments. I'm always interested in what people choose and why. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like if you haven't. I'm going to be doing one of these every month so that you can stay up to date on the latest hardware out there. And have a great day.